Coming up on the Hilton Head News, fallen veterans are remembered on the island during the holiday season. Also, the Sunset Rotary Club demonstrates the true spirit of giving and taking in the celebration of trees. Stand by, the Hilton Head News is next. Welcome to the Hilton Head News. Here's a look at the local news on Monday, December 17th. If you stop by at Six Oak Cemetery in Sea Pines, you'll see wreaths decorating every fallen veteran's gravesite. That's because this past Saturday, volunteers on Hilton Head Island joined with others around the country to lay wreaths at military graves. It was part of Wreaths Across America, which began back in 1992. That's when a Maine businessman took surplus wreaths to lay at the graves in Arlington National Cemetery. Now the placement of wreaths is done at hundreds of veteran cemeteries and military graves in all 50 states and beyond. Representative Tim Scott of South Carolina will soon be Senator Tim Scott. Governor Nikki Haley made the announcement that she has tapped Scott to replace Jim DeMint, who left to head up the Heritage Foundation. Scott will be the first African American in the U.S. Senate since Reconstruction who is from the South, and he will be the only African American to serve in the Senate in the upcoming session. Clouds and drizzle didn't dampen the spirits of those attending the Winter Wonderland Festival at Shelter Cove this past Friday and Saturday. There were hayrides, some snow, and plenty of marshmallows for roasting on an open fire. Proceeds from the event will go to the Island Rec Children's Scholarship Fund. Well, the spirit of giving was evident at the Hilton Head Island Sunset Rotary Club meeting last week. The Sunset Rotary presented Safe Harbor with a check for $2,000. Safe Harbor is a nonprofit member organization for Islanders who want to remain at home as they age. This week, the Sunset Rotary will continue its acts of kindness as the club plans on presenting a $2,000 check to Heroes on Horseback. If you're in the mood to see Christmas trees, a stop in the lobby of the Westin ought to make you happy. The resort is holding its fourth annual charity celebration of trees. The trees, decorated by local organizations, have hotel gift certificates, which will be awarded this week to high bidders of a silent auction. Proceeds will benefit the Sandalwood Community Food Pantry. Now here's a look at news from around the region. Have you ever wondered who has the highest paying state jobs? Well, wonder no more. The Post and Courier has a new salary spotlight tool. The searchable database allows you to look up the salaries of South Carolina government employees. Those with the biggest paychecks are doctors, professors, power company executives, and college sports coaches. Every year, $2.7 billion in tax dollars goes towards the salaries of state employees. If you're curious and you want to take a look at some of those salaries, go to postandcourier.com salary. The State Department of Juvenile Justice is locking up fewer teenagers, and because of that, it says it needs more money. Agency officials told lawmakers last week that the department has lost $16 million in federal and other funds since 2008 because most of that money was tied directly to the number of teenagers the agency puts behind bars. The fewer juveniles the agency arrests and incarcerates, the less money it gets. According to the agency's annual report since 2002, the number of juvenile cases has dropped by an average of 4.5 percent a year or 40.8 percent overall. The number of teenagers charged with violent or serious offenses is at a 20-year low, falling 62 percent since 1995. Director Margaret Barber told the Legislative Subcommittee that the agency now places more emphasis on non-jail options, which include group homes and wilderness camps. Barber says money is needed to pay for costs associated with medical care, clothing, hygiene, utilities, and fuel. Beginning in January, the public will have an opportunity to take a look at South Carolina's former nuclear weapons complex. People who are interested in touring the Savannah River site can sign up in advance for those tours. Organizers say they're offering 22 free driving tours in 2013 with about 1,100 openings. Savannah River officials say visitors can learn about how that site was used by the U.S. Department of Energy and what happens there now.
The satellite-tagged great white shark named Mary Lee seems to like the Low Country's ocean waters. The 16-foot, 3,400-pound shark's ping was recorded Sunday morning just off Kiowa Island. Mary Lee was tagged with a global positioning device by researchers in September off Cape Cod, Massachusetts. She spent most of this month in waters near Savannah, but started making her way toward the Low Country again on Friday. Mary Lee made her first appearance in Low Country waters back in November. Now, when we return, just what do convention gatherings on Hilton Head Island mean to the local economy? We'll find out from Charlie Clark. Also, we'll get details on some of the news headlines from B.J. Frazier of the Hilton Head Sun. And we'll get a rundown of holiday happenings at Sea Pines. Stay right there. We'll have more of the Hilton Head news in just a moment. Welcome to our Christmas Wonderland at Antiques and Garden Collectibles at the Greenery. Fabulous ideas for decorating and gifts await you. What's new this year? Silver, gold, and champagne colors for Christmas. Big paper snowflakes with lights. Large Christmas ornaments to hang from chandeliers. Whimsy Lori C. Mitchell figurines. Mercury glass. Aunt Sadie's tree in a can aroma candles. Nativity scenes. Tabletop trees and more. Make your first holiday stop, Antiques and Garden Collectibles, at The Greenery. Charlie Clark, Vice President of Communications for the Hilton Head Island Bluffton Chamber of Commerce, joins me on the Hilton Head News. Great to see you, Charlie. Great to be here, Allie. Thanks. I know you want to talk about the impact that groups like meetings and conventions have on our local community in terms of the economy. What about it? Well, you know, recently the Chamber just hosted the largest group of meeting planners ever simultaneously combined on the island. We had over 80 meeting planners, and a lot of people are under the impression when it comes to groups, this is how business gets booked. When a, when a corporation is coming to the island or coming to any destination, they work with meeting planners. And many of these meeting planners that were with us, they were over 80, can represent anywhere from 20 to 30 events each. So wow. having them here on the island means a lot for us in terms of visibility to make sure that they understand that Hilton Head is a great place to host meetings. Well, how do we go about in the community courting these types of conventions or large groups that meet? For us, as, as a destination, we're about 80-20%, 80% leisure business, about 20% meeting in groups, and it's something that we focus on tremendously. We have an entire department, that's all they do, is, is work to garner group business. Last year, the Chambers Group Business was responsible for over 3,800 room nights with an economic di impact directly of about 1.1 million. That's why meetings like this are so important and why it's so important for us to focus on corporate business as it returns after the recession. So, so what kind of strategy is there as far as raising the profile for Hilton Head Island as a national and international destination? Well, it's outwards. It's a push out to get information to these meeting planners. You know, they're looking for a great destination for their groups just as much as we're looking to host them on the island. So it's reaching out to them and always reminding them, especially at this time when so many of our oceanfront resorts are undergoing renovation, to let them know there's new things happening on the destination. There's new reasons to bring your group to Hilton Head Island. Well, Charlie Clark, Clark, Vice President of Communications for the Hilton Head Island Bluffton Chamber of Commerce. Always, as always, great information. Thank you for your time. Thanks. And now with details on some local stories making the headlines, B.J. Frazier joins me from the Hilton Head Sun. Hi, B.J. Hey, how are you, Allie? Great, thank you. Uh, some news with regards to the accommodations uh, tax funds from the town of Hilton Head Island. A couple of organizations went in saying uh, we'd like some funds and walked away with nothing. Tell us about that if you could. Sure. Uh, well, recently the accommodation uh, tax fund, a tax fund committee, awarded nearly a million dollars in grants. And... Uh, there were two very notable organizations that uh, went in looking for money and, and did not receive anything. One was the um, uh, Hilton Head Airport. They, uh, of course, claimed that they're part of, uh, should be entitled to, to some tourism money and so forth. But they asked for $132,000 worth of uh, funding for police and fire uh, uh, that's necessary, mandated for the airport. And what happened was the, uh, the council or the committee rather said, you know what, uh, there was a ruling that, that these funds cannot be used for fire and police, so they denied them out of hand. And the second one was the Hilton Head Island uh, Institute, which is a brand new organization that wants to bring uh, classes down here for people from tourists and visitors and so forth. They claim they'll bring 2,500 tourists over a 10-day period next year, and, and they were going for uh, uh, $150,000 to do that, and the council said, well, we have no metrics to prove that you're going to be able to bring that many people here, so we're not going to give you anything. 
Uh, and they were a little miffed because they've been working on this for years. And of course, the Art Center, which is in dire straits, um, apparently is going to get the $5 million that they need. So we'll see what happens. Uh, now, you mentioned the airport. What's happening with the uh, Beaufort County Airport director position still open, right? Yeah, there's a number of positions. Surprisingly, when unemployment uh, rate is, hand, is hovering around 10% in our area, that the uh, airport director they've been advertising and only have six applicants, and it's a pretty heavyweight job. Um, and there, there's also about another two dozen uh, openings throughout the county uh, for the government, and they haven't been able to fill them. And the thing is, they're only advertising in state for these jobs. They don't, you would think they'd do something like a national search on it, but they don't because they don't want to pay the relocation cost. So in the meantime, if you know anybody that's looking for a job, go to their site and maybe they can find one. Uh, news with regards to plans for that aquatic center on Hilton Head Island, where do things stand with that? Well, um, unfortunately, uh, again, the town council uh, saw their request and they uh, uh, tabled it for now because uh, they're running out of money. Again, with the art center uh, needing some funding to keep going, uh, these, uh, that organization is just out of luck. Well, B.J. Frazier, thank you for giving us the inside scoop on those local stories. Great as always to have you here on the Hilton Head News. Thank you very much, Allie. And now, local retailers that rely on shoppers when it's the height of the vacation season have to do some strategy planning when it comes to attracting customers throughout the year. Here to talk more about that is Leslie Richardson of Caligny Plaza. Hi, Leslie. Thank you, Allie. This is so exciting to be here. It's such a festive time on Hilton Head Island right now, isn't it? It certainly is. In full disclosure, before we get started, Caligny Plaza is an advertiser here on WHHI-TV. Uh, Leslie, talk about the challenge where locals have that perception in the summer. We're not going near Caligny Plaza. There's no parking and it's just a mob scene. Well, Allie, I will tell you, in the summer at Caligny, it is a vacationer's dream. It's where memories are made. And what we do for our locals and vacationers so that we ensure that everyone can get a parking space is we actually hire a valet in the summer so that whenever you come, there's somebody who's greeting you with a big smile. They'll either park your car or they'll find a parking space for you. So we do feel like we really make it inviting and easy for people to come and shop with us. In the other nine months of the year, you can find a space at Caligny. You sure can. It. And uh, what's interesting, I'm a local and I didn't know about that valet parking, so that sounds kind of nice to me. Um, well, we'll expect to see you this summer. Okay, I'll And be right there. now, we want you to come and do all of your Christmas shopping at Caligny because did you know that you can pull right up in front of the store of any of the shops at Caligny? That sounds great. I, I know a lot of people are interested, Leslie, in the town's plans for redeveloping the Caligny area. Can you give us an update on where things stand with that? Thank you, and we are so excited that the town of Hilton Head Island has picked the Caligny area to really do some redevelopment, and they have been wonderful. They've really kept us informed, and we feel really included and involved. And the big part of the plan that I think is really exciting to the locals and to visitors alike is that they're really going to increase parking, and they're going to actually create a park. And I think there's also plans to come up with even more parking. But the redevelopment of the Caligny area is going to give everyone access to the beach. And anything that happens in the Caligny area will benefit Caligny Shopping Center and all the merchants there and ultimately all the people on Hilton Head. We're almost out of time, but I want to ask you quickly, you know, the economy is not what it was, say, uh, a few years ago. How, how has Caligny been doing uh, with the slowdown? Ali, Caligny is 98% leased up. We are very excited that we have merchants there that have so many different types of shops and provide so many services that people really want to come to Caligny. Caligny is a happening. People want to be there. If you want to really experience the joy of Christmas shopping, turn off your computer, stop online shopping, come to Caligny, stroll through and spend in a day, have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, enjoy the magic of shopping on Hilton Head Island. Well, Leslie Richardson, thank you for that invitation. and Thanks for joining us on the Hilton Head News. Thank you so much for having me today, Allie. When we come back, we'll have some ideas on some fun going ons at Sea Pines Plantation. Stay right there. Beaufort Town Center, the perfect place to live, work, play, and shop. 
Uniquely located on Boundary Street, Beaufort Town Center is adjacent to city and county government buildings at the entrance of Beaufort's historic district. This new urban town center seamlessly blends lodging, office space, retail, restaurant, and residential sites with pristine views of the intercoastal waterway. Let the executives at Beaufort Town Center assist you with any of your real estate and leasing needs. Call today at 843-521-9000. If you are looking for some fun over the holidays, here are some ideas for you from Rob Bender, who is the Director of Recreation at the Sea Pines Resort. Hi, Rob. Hello, Allie. Thank you very much for having me today. Well, I've read about the Harbor Town Lights. True Confessions haven't been down there yet. Tell us about it. Well, you're missing out on a great holiday tradition that started a few years ago. We have numerous holiday lights throughout the marina area, illuminated displays, the lighthouse, trees and palms covered in white lights. It's a great time. Boy, and I bet there's nothing like seeing those lights reflected off the water, too. So I promise I'll make it down there. Please do. Uh, wow, well, here's something unusual that uh, you let me know about in advance. People will be able to skate down at Harbor Town? That's right. We're really excited about this. We think this is the first time skating has ever taken place on Hilton Head. This is real skates with a synthetic material, like a big white cutting board. It will provide the skates. You don't have to worry about bundling up. It'll be a beautiful background of the marina, a Christmas tree, Christmas lights. So we're very excited to start this uh, Saturday, December the 22nd. We'll go through the 31st. It's just $12 for adults and $8 for children. And that includes the skates. Uh, most people don't have skates here on Hilton Head Island. And, and how long can you go for when you come to skate? Is it for an hour or? Sure, right now we say it's at least a 30 minute time period unless others are waiting. Uh, if nobody's waiting, you can keep skating all day long. Sneak in a little extra time. I, how, what have you heard about? I've never done that on artificial uh, ice. Sure, we're real excited. It's supposed to be very similar to real ice maybe just a tad bit less slippery, which isn't necessarily a bad thing when you have a lot of beginners or people haven't skated in a while. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, that sounds great. And, and good luck with that new Thank venture. Um, now, New Year's Eve, what's happening? New Year's Eve, we started last year, another new tradition, a New Year's Eve ball drop. We say it's just like Times Square without so many people. We drop a seven foot golf ball from the top of the Harbor Town Lighthouse. And we do it both at 7 o'clock and midnight, appealing to families and maybe those that don't want to stay up quite so late. We have live entertainment throughout the evening. We'll have a real festive atmosphere. Deep Well will be on hand collecting donations and handing out great uh, horns and hats, all part of the celebration. You know, I really like the idea that you do that at 7 o'clock because I know people with children or without children, uh, some of us like to go to bed <laughs> early, I'll admit it. So I think that's a great idea to do it both times. Uh, Rob Bender, Director of Recreation for the Sea Pines Resort, thank you for joining us on the Hilton Head News. Thank you for having me. Now joining me, Nancy Watts from Where to Go Hilton Head Island. Hi, Nancy. Hey there. Well, I know you've got some information on some entertainment for us, some fun things to do coming up. Uh, the first one has to do with theater. It does, and anything goes. And we've got to see it before the 30th. If you don't see, you'll be so sorry if you do not see anything goes. And Great that's music. At, and that's at the Art Center? Art Center, and also, now put this on your calendar because if you don't, uh, you know, you may let it slip by. However, it's not until January. It's January the 18th. The Hubbard Street Dance uh, Group will be just knocking your socks off because they are so good. And that's a one-time performance, a my understanding. A one-night show. It's on the 18th at 8 o'clock, and you wouldn't want to miss that. Well, so get your tickets early for that one. Uh, what about some choices as far as uh, music goes? Music. Oh gosh, yes, you've got to go. You've got to see Greg Russell, the 23rd. It's the 23rd. That's what day is that? That's is Sunday. That, oh, thank you. I needed okay, that. Okay, I needed to see I didn't have my calendar too. in front of me. And the 20, yes, it is the 23rd. It's it's at 7:30 at night down at the Liberty Oak. You do not want to miss it. Your children will love it. You probably brought the kids, or will have your grandchildren here and they would not want to miss that. Oh, that sounds great. And uh, if people want to get a little exercise this upcoming Saturday, there's oh, something going on? It hurts me to think about it, but yes. The Jingle Bell Run is right by the hospital. It's close in case you should have a little problem. They've tied, they've tied bells on the tennis shoes, on your running shoes, and won't that be cute? Everybody will just be jingling along and having a good time. That uh, sounds like a lot of fun. And Nancy Watts, as always, we appreciate your time and uh, thank you for joining us here 
on the Hilton Head News. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And it's such a great day out there, but I hear there may be a little bit of cool weather coming. Yeah, that's okay for the runners, so hopefully they'll be okay. Again, thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on the Hilton Head News. I'm Allie McNair, and we'll see you the next time.